Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So now what are the different scores, what are the various parameters used to assess the score, one is the maximum score, this as I discussed earlier, this is the high scoring pairs, how many high scoring pairs in the alignment, right, this is the width score of high scoring pairs. Then the total score, this will give you the all the HSPs from the same database sequence. Then the query coverage as we discussed now, the percentage of length coverage for the query, right, if you have 100 SDUs and the alignment you obtain only for 60, 60 residues, then 40 percent you could not cover, right. In this case, the coverage is only 60 percent. Then E value, what is E value? This expected number of chances, right, you randomly you can get with the same alignment. Why the cover, co query coverage is very important? Sometimes partial match can be Yeah, sometimes you get partial match, right, if you have 100 residues, right. If you use all the 100 residues, if another match with the 100 residues, then your score will be less. Number of similar residues or identical residues may be uh, 40 or 50. But on the other hand, if you have some only some segments, for example, 10 residues or 20 residues, and this you will have high matching, and for example, you have the matching of about 90 percent, right. Now, is there is a bias. If you have this one, the random choice to get this specific residues is very high, right, compared with the complete alignment. This, this in this case, you have to take into consideration not the, the score, but also the query coverage. This is the reason why they give the query coverage also in the alignment score. So, now align the two sequences, this is your query sequence and this is subject 1. So, this is the first sequence and second sequence. What is the middle? If both the residues are the same, then we put the same letter, right, M, K, A and so on. And one place you put plus, what is the meaning of plus? Similarity, right, similarity from the matrix you use, either the PAM matrix or PLOSA matrix. So, here I and M, they are similar, right, they have the positive score, so they put positives. So, based on that, they had to calculate the identities, that means out of 148, right, the 148 sequence, right, completely everything is aligned, so gap is 0 percent. So, in this case, query coverage is 100 percent, right. So, out of 148, 147 are matching, right. The identity means exactly the same. So, this is 99 percent. And then, if you see the positives, it contains identities plus the plus, that means similar residues. So, add everything out of 148, all the 148 are positives. So, this is 100 percent, right. They give it along with the scores as well as the E values. So, now here if you have the here two sequences, right, the earlier one we give one sequence, we try to find the match, all the matches and then see which one has the best match that will be similar to your query sequence. Now, if you have two sequences, so I gave sequence number 1, right and the sequence number 2 and how far these two sequences are similar. In this case, plus can do handle the situation, enter the first sequence, right, in the first, in the first place and here you have to click on this align two sequences. If you align two sequences, then the next box will open. So, in the next box, if you give a second sequence, right and then blast, if you do this, right, you get this is the query 1 and this is the subject 1, right. So, you have the uh, alignment here, right. So, there are 115 residues, among 115, 44 are same and among this 115, 67 are positives. If you compare this alignment and the previous alignment, what is the difference? Right, the previous one it is 100, is 99 percent and the positives are 100 percent, almost you can see the alignment. So, you cannot say that every all for all sequences you get this type of alignment. So, if you see here lot of gaps, right, the trees are totally different. You can see Q and V, right, they are not, they have negative score in the blossom matrix or the PAM matrix. So, here there are gaps. So, some cases if it is same, they put the same residue and the plus means they are positives in the case of the blossom or uh, PAM matrix, right. 
So, now we here see there are 3 percent gaps right and 58 percent positives and 38 percent identities right. So, be sure always the positives are higher or lower than identity higher than the identities because positives include the identities plus the similar ones. So, now in the previous class I showed this two sequences as an example to get a dot matrix. If you want to have a dot matrix here you have the dot matrix view right. So, if you click on this then you will get the dot matrix for these two sequences ok. We did the dot matrix and we found some matches how far they are similar how many percentage this human and chicken hemoglobin are similar. So, what to do? Do blast. So, here if you give the first human sequence and the chicken sequence right. So, now view the alignment how much what is the identity 69 percent identity and the positives are 82 percent right they are completely aligned without gaps they are aligned right. So, this is the uh, uh, sequence identity between human and chicken protein sequences. So, we discussed blast and we have another problem called FASTA I discussed earlier. So, FASTA also can do this if you give the sequence here right this is the FASTA sequence and if you run then this will give you the sequences and it will give the alignment right we can give the values similar to the blast. So, till now we discussed about two aspects one is if you have query sequence you can get similar sequences in the databases and the second one pairwise alignment if you have pairs you can align if you have more number of sequences hundreds of sequences or thousands of sequences then how to make the alignment right. So, in this case this we do the multiple sequence alignment right the name itself tells this is the multiple sequence we have more than two sequences together and you can see whether there is any residues which are similar in different sequences. So, the sequence alignment of three or more sequences right generally proteins or DNA or RNA whatever. So, what will it provide which information we get for multiple sequence alignment conservation right. So, these sequences whether they have any evolution relationship right. So, you see the input of query sequences we assume that these sequences are similar and why are they are similar and why are they are distant right. For example, just we showed an example like ch chicken and human hemoglobin right what is the sequence identity 62 percent right. So, if you have different organisms and if you align these sequences then you can see which region are similar which region we have maintained the same residues and why are we have the variations and variations happens in which type of substitutions. So, then we can see whether they have a share a lineage or they have any common ancestor right you can see the relationship if you align the different uh, sequences using multiple sequence alignment ok. How to do this right this is a 2D table right because we give the sequences one by one right and put the same sequences in different in uh, same residues positions in different sequences in the same place. So, here first we see the relative position of residues if any residue is preserved for example, some residues in the PAM matrix we have high score for some residues right. Can we list few residues which have high score in the PAM matrix 16, 16 tryptophan right these residues are very very conserved residues right they they really uh, prefer to be not changed. So, if you change it may have adverse effects like if you see the sequences and any positions or any set of regions where they preserve to be the same in different sequences. Then we have similar residues in all sequences they are placed one by each other. So, that they can see vertically the same residue this is what they want to maintain when doing the multiple sequence alignment. For example, here I give 5 sequences 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 if you see the different positions right give 10 positions if we consider the first position right. So, it is accommodated with which residues Okay. Mainly Y and, and F aromatic residue. Right, right. So the two residues. So they put small Y because it's mainly dominated by Y and two other residues. If you do a second one, so mainly with the D, so they put small D. And the fourth position, if you see, G is maintained because G is the same in all the sequences. They put G here. And some cases, if you see the tenth one this is small l right because mainly l and v and some cases they put the equal preferences right. For example, if you see position number 5 or 6 they put either a or i or either v or l right. So, in this case you can see the positions 
some residues are maintained. So, they like to be the same residue at different positions right. For example, uh, uh, number 4 the glycine is maintained likewise position number 9 the saline is maintained. So, this will help you to see the importance of some residues which are of functional importance or structural importance. So, what is the computational complexity? Uh, because if you align two sequences, it takes some time which depends upon the length of the sequences, right. So, if you dep depend on the length of the sequence, it will uh, uh, depend on the si size for two sequences. If you increase the sequences, the complexity will automatically increase, right, because the processing time and the memory space this will related to the product of the length of the sequences. If you increase more number of sequences, it will take time to align all the sequences and make the consensus one. So, we extend this comparison right pairwise comparison to 3 sequence, 4 sequence, 5 sequence right complexity increases. If there is n sequences that the complexity is very high right. So, in this case the time taken to compute the alignment is also very high. Then how to do this? How to tackle the situation right? There are several approaches to tackle the situation. Cluster is one of the most popular approaches right to align the similar sequences which are evolution related. So, how it works? First they try to sequence in pairs right then similar sequences or small sequences they put together right. Then they form the cluster of sequences which are similar to each other and they put one by one each other and the distantly related sequences they do it later. Likewise they can see the correspondence between similar sequences and distant related sequences. So, first what they do similar sequences are aligned first and the distant related sequences they add later. Once the pairwise sequences are calculated they use the sequence into groups and then from that they make the final sequence alignment. There are different ways to construct this multiple sequence alignment. So, let us the cluster W right, this is a program which uses the positioning of the gaps also in the close related sequences compared with the more distant ones. So, the information we obtain in the alignment process about the variability of the sequ similar sequences which will help to introduce gap penalties because if you have similar sequences right then you have less gap penalties compared with the one which are having the descent each other right from this query sequence. So, now this is a program cluster W right currently we are using cluster omega right to align sequences with the several organisms in multiple sequence alignment. How to do this? Okay, we go to the cluster W. So, here you enter the sequence right of this multiple sequence alignment okay given by one right. So, if you give all the sequences in any format because they accept several formats right then you run the program. So, then we get the data. So, from this figure we can see how different sequences are aligned. So, if you see this one this is the sequence different sequences we gave and the next one is the alignment how they are properly aligned and then see the residue position in this each sequence. So, if you look into this alignment we can infer some information right what are the information you can obtain from this conserved regions right first we can see the different color codes right what is the meaning of different color codes what is the meaning of blue color here charge charge negatively charge right blue is d and e negatively charged right there aspartic acid glutamic acid negative charge if we have the green the green one Q N S Y right. Polar so, there are polar residues they are listed Y as a polar residue because it contains OH, OH group right. So, this is aromatic but even it contains OH group and hence oh, the cluster W consider this as a polar. So, they give green color for that. Then what is the magenta one? Positive charge. K here is R. So, the positive charge then we have the red one mainly the hydrophobic residues right valine isolation phenylalanine and so on. So, if you see the colors you can also you can see the same colors are aligned the same position for example, if you use the E aligned up to from here to here. So, likewise if you see this position hydrophobic residue the valine leucine isolation so it is aligned for several sequences. So, if you do the multiple sequence alignment you can see there are any specific residue positions are maintained in different organisms. Here interestingly I give the sequence that is mainly the membrane proteins 
there are two different types of membrane proteins I used the beta barrel membrane proteins I tried to align. So, even these proteins they maintain some conservation this is why they are having some specific functions for this type of proteins right. So, you can see the residues are conserved. So, you can see the structure function relationship in any types of proteins. So, now I have a question how to get the multiple sequence alignment for hemoglobin A chain from different organisms how to do this. So, we can get the hemoglobin A chain sequence we can do blast from blast we can obtain the different first we get the sequence of hemoglobin A what shall we get the hemoglobin A chain sequence uniprot right first you go to uniprot right you check with the hemoglobin A you will get list of sequences then you get list of sequences then what to do you have to identify relevant entries the question is you have to get the the alignment for different organisms, but if you do uniprot you search with the hemoglobin A you will get several entries from same organisms as well as different organisms. What is the possibility of having same organisms why we get same organisms different data mutation data mutation data right. So, in this case you will get the same human you will get 2 3 times, but the question is to get from different organisms then you have to select relevant entries if you can select relevant entries and then you can save in FASTA format that we discussed in the pre one of the previous classes right how to obtain the data using in the database. So, you can get the sequence in FASTA format and you give these sequences in cluster W if you do this right for uh, take the sequences now you give this in this place you can paste sequences and you will get the uh, multiple sequence alignment. So, this is we discussed about the cluster W there are several other software which are available in the literature which can also be used for the multiple sequence alignment. So, for example, MAFT right this is available in the uh, this website cbrc.jp right and this muscle this is also one of the widely used softwares. So, you can see this in UK. So, you can use this muscle and the promotes this another software right? this also you can uh, uh, use for multiple sequence alignment. So, why do we need different software to use a multiple sequence alignment? So, what do you expect you get similar results or different results? Slightly yeah almost you get the similar results, but they try to improve the alignment values mainly to align maintain the conserved positions and second option is the speed right we need to get the data very quickly then to handling more number of sequences and handling the sequence at different lengths. So, there are several complexities in multiple sequence alignment. So, they developed different uh, algorithms right to handle these situations. So, you can use any of the software to align the multiple sequences. So, in the last few minutes I discussed about the cyblast right. So, what is cyblast? It is a position specific iterative blast right. It is a program which searches the database of sequences similar to query sequence. Then they get the blast sequences right and then we try to derive the position specific scoring matrix based on the alignment you can compare the positions and the residues in different positions then they try to align these positions and derive the position specific scoring matrix. For example, if you have your own sequence what is the possibility of having the same residues at different positions depending based on the aligned sequences in your homologous sequences. How to do this first is search the results with the blast and derive the patterns derive the patterns from the <coughs> multiple sequence alignment from the initial kits. Then they repeat the process right because for example, if you have two uh, alignments right they are very perfectly matching and the third one is matching with another uh, for example, 10th position and 11th position they iteratively they change and see if there is fine tunes with the best match then keep at the top. Then again the rest they tune again. So, to, 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 during the iterative, iterative process finally, they make the perfect alignment this is how the side blast works. Once they make these alignments then they try to see what is the probability of having a specific amino acid residue in a protein to maintain in the different organisms of same type right. So, this is the site you can use the site blast. So, here we give your input sequence once you give the input sequence what it will do it will do the blast it will collect the sequences and do the multiple sequence alignment do different iterations you can see the threshold value. So, depending upon the uh, expectation value. So, iterate again and again and finally, if you click here then you will see your uh, alignment multiple sequence alignment plus you will get this position specific scoring matrices. Now, this position specific scoring matrices you can use it for uh, further applications for example, 
if you have a sequence of unknown function right and if you want to see which residues are binding with some other molecules right. So, what you what can you do you will get a sequence right then you can see the similar sequences and then we can make this matrix and see where it matches with the known sequence and mapping the known sequence with your own sequence you can see this region could be a probable binding site for your particular region. Likewise, you can have several potential applications by using these psi blast profiles and the development of this position specific scoring matrices. So, by summarizing what did we discuss today? Blast different kinds of algorithm for example, blast multiple <coughs> sequence alignment, alignment yes. and then psi blast. So, these faster cluster faster cluster w right we can give the started with the pairwise sequence alignment yeah. right the, the two different algorithms like, like the blast and faster then we extended with the multiple sequence alignment and see what are the various parameters you can use to get the score how about the sequence identity what about the sequence similarities right and how far the two sequences are similar or different from each other then we extend to multiple sequence alignment then using the multiple sequence alignment you can see the position where we have the similar residues maintained in different organisms and then you can also use these alignments for deriving this position specific scoring matrices uh, that I will explain in later classes. So, in the next cl upcoming classes I will discuss about the use of this multiple sequence alignment to get the conservation score how far how to identify which residues are conserved or the matrix to get the numbers using some numerical values or you can have this alignment based on any trees whether you can relate form of this evolutionary trees right as well as what can we do with these specific alignments and so on. Thanks for your kind attention. Of